Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So before we get started today, I want to give a huge shout out to Gary for supporting us on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, consider supporting us via Patreon or Coffee, and definitely go follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I'm going to be posting the first photo on my Instagram with the new camera uh, at some point in the next day or two, and so definitely go check that out. Follow us on Instagram and feel free to DM us on Instagram. Sometimes people will want to like reach out to us and. Uh, they like comment on YouTube, but just feel free to send us a message on Instagram. That's probably the best way to reach us. Anyways, as you're probably wanting to know, what is going on with the Eglinton Crosstown? Is it going to open in 2021? That's when it's supposed to open, right? What's happening? Uh, are they still going to make that date? You may have heard the lines delayed seven months. What's the deal? So here's the situation. The Edmonton Crosstown, to put it plainly, is honestly not my favorite project. There's a lot of elements of the project that if you get into the kind of fine details are just illogical. It's a great project in the sense that it's connecting a lot of GO Transit lines and it is providing that kind of northern uh, east-west connection that doesn't exist right now. So that's great. But then there's a lot of just totally irrational decisions which are becoming more and more clear as construction progresses. Uh, one of those decisions, for example, is the fact that uh, basically between uh, where the line comes up to surface level at uh, after Laird and where it goes back underground at Don Mills where it will meet the eventual Ontario line, uh, there's a single road crossing. They basically built it this way because there's this thought that this the LRT needed to be in the middle of the street for whatever reason. If the LRT had have just been on the south side of the street, then the entire line would have been grade separated all the way from Don Mills, all the way out to Mount Dennis. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, that would have meant that trains could operate fully automatic all the way across the entire line. You would have had way more capacity at Don Mills, and that's critical because as I mentioned, the Ontario line will be connecting there. But that's one of just many problems. Another one could be the fact that the Caledonia GO station, which was always sold as something that was going to happen basically at the exact same time as the Crosstown construction has only now been tendered. And so that will be open for day one of the Crosstown. And so while the Crosstown is good for a lot of reasons, I have a lot of qualms with it too. And the qualms have been getting worse and worse as I see different things and as more information becomes clear. But what's happening with the delays? As you may have seen, there's an official seven month delay on the opening of the Crosstown. But I really don't think that captures the entire picture. You see, with these large infrastructure projects, it is of course normal for the project to be delayed. And I'm honestly relatively sympathetic. In some cases, the project is a relatively short time span, and so if it, a little time is added to finish up the project, that's okay. But in the case of the Crosstown, the project has been under construction, or at least will have by the time it opens, for over 10 years. Now, that is just terrible. When you mention the fact that the Crosstown isn't even fully underground its entire length, it, it isn't comparable to a lot of other lines, for example, the Ontario line, which is going to be much more complicated. It's going to go through downtown, it's going to be fully grade separated, it's going to be automated, it's going to have a lot of complex elements to it. Uh, the Ontario line, the plan is what, five years to complete the entire line, and the Crosstown has taken at least twice as long. Uh, but again, we're going to talk about how long I think it may actually be delayed in just a moment. So yes, the official delay is seven months, but to put things a bit more clearly, if you want to have a real idea of how delayed the project is, you just need to look at the construction sites. Yes, a lot of the surface construction is coming on great. And to be clear, we don't want the project to be delayed. We want more transit access across Toronto and the Crosstown is going to do a great job of providing that. We may have issues with the project, but that doesn't mean we don't think it's a great line that needs to open as soon as possible to relieve the Eglinton bus and provide more buses from Eglinton to the rest of the city where they are sorely needed. That being said, if you look at the construction progress at kind of the most important stations, Cedarvale and Eglinton, as in Eglinton Young, where uh, the Young Line crosses the Crosstown, the progress is just not impressive at all. The stations are still basically just holes full of dirt. Uh, and while, yes, a lot of progress can be made in a short period of time, I think what's important to remember is that 
Actually, the rough construction, you know, the digging, clearing, often a lot of the concrete and framework, etc., that can actually happen pretty fast because it is to a degree a bit rougher and because all of it's been engineered uh, in, in advance. So it's all pre-planned. That being said, if you look at another project in Toronto, the York Spadina subway extension, uh, another project I'm not necessarily very fond of, uh, the entire project looked pretty much completely finished for like over a year before it opened. Now the Crosstown doesn't look anywhere close to being finished and we're currently around a year and a half away from its opening, which means that if the Toronto York Spadina subway extension is anything to go off of, we're probably at least a year behind if everything can be completed in the seventh month time span that the uh, contractors are basically letting on. The truth is though, I don't expect that's a realistic uh, deadline. Often these type of projects, when they're delayed, there's no announcement at all. Given the fact that they're actually announcing a seventh month delay it makes me think that the project is actually much more severely delayed and they're just trying to get ahead of it now by saying we're delayed, uh, you guys are going to have to wait. And what will end up happening is then as we get closer and closer that seven month delay is going to move back and back and back. And again, other projects have shown us that just because the system looks like it's finished doesn't mean it necessarily is. Another great example would be Ottawa where the system looked pretty much finished but the stations in the downtown core were just not. The finishings weren't done and the finishings and the fine details, the electrical and plumbing and all of that, that often takes a lot of time. Plus, once the stations are actually built, they have to be inspected and they're quite strict because these are major pieces of infrastructure that need to last a long time and they're critical to people's safety. So with all that said, it is a little concerning. And then furthermore, when you get into the uh, signaling systems and that sort of uh, topic, we might be in even more trouble. Now, if you look at the Ottawa LRT, a lot of the signaling issues I think can be attributed to the, to the fact that, you know, it's fully automated operation with what is basically a new vehicle. Plus the Citadis trains, which are LRVs, not unlike what will be operated on Eglinton, aren't usually operated. Uh, in a kind of fully automatic mode like this, and so it's just not a usual setup. That all being said, Eglinton is using an even more obscure setup. So we're using not only a brand new train design, uh, which has basically not been used anywhere else, it is being used in Waterloo, but in this context, it's just totally different. The capacity and how hard we're gonna be pushing the trains is just way more, and they're going to be signaled using ATC. The more complex bit though is that they have to be signaled using ATC, but then they need to transition to a non-ATC signaling environment on the surface section. With all that said, there's just so much complexity in the signaling that I wouldn't be surprised if everything is completed and the line can operate functionally because the signaling just isn't fully sorted out. As we know with the subway as well in Toronto, the signaling can be an absolute nightmare. It can take a lot of work and it's very difficult to do. So even if the line is completed, say it's completed, I think realistically we're probably looking at if we consider the original opening date of September 2021 and we're looking at a seven month delay, summer 2022 would be when I'd expect construction to be actually done optimistically if they're not lying very much about that seven month delay. So even with that all said, once you get into testing, which can take up to you know a year, we're looking at potentially the 2023 opening on the Eglinton Crosstown, at which point it will be almost 12 to 13 years after the line initially started pre-construction, which is terrible. With all that said, I, we are optimistic. We're gonna be shooting a lot more videos in the next few months of the construction, the progress, perhaps the testing, if we can kind of get access to some of that. That's not as clear right now since the testing is more limited. Metrolinx isn't super transparent with the public about when they're gonna be testing, if you wanna go take a look, etc. But yeah, we're gonna try to get more footage, but that's kind of the situation with Eglinton. A lot of people have been asking questions to me about it, so I thought, let's make a video. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please consider sharing it and subscribing to the channel. Good night.